Okay, let's shift over and take a look at the specularity of our material, which controls how light is going to reflect back off the surface. It'll give you kind of a shiny look. So I'm going to jump back into our material by double-clicking it. And what we're going to do is utilize part of our original diffuse texture sample and plug that into our specular color. So let's just start off doing that. Now, if we take any single channel, notice we have red, we have green, and we have blue, as well as our RGB color, we can plug that into our specular value and use that to define our specularity. Now, if I just start off, for instance, grabbing just the red channel, I can plug that in, like so, and notice that we don't actually get red information. We get white information, because what this is is a measurement of how much red. It's not red itself, it's just a value between 0 and 1. If you need to see what this looks like, you can temporarily take the red channel and plug it into diffuse, and you can see that. It's just a near white version of the texture showing you how much red information is there. Now let's plug our linear interpolation back into diffuse. So we've just set up some specularity, but I would like to be able to influence the color of our specularity. To do this, we're going to bring in another parameter. So let's right click, come under parameters, and let's bring in a new vector parameter. And the first thing you should always do when you make a vector parameter is name it. And we're going to name this specular color. Now we can give this a default value. So let's go ahead and pick on something that's mostly white, maybe with just a little bit of red tinge to it. And the darker you make this, the less specularity you're going to have. But now we need to combine this with the information that we're already getting from the red channel. See the cool thing about using the red channel is notice when I put the specular highlight right over the grout, the grout isn't particularly shiny. If we just took the actual uh, vector parameter and plug that into specular, notice how we get this uniform specularity. This looks like a brick ball that's been maybe waxed three or four times, and that's not really what we're looking for, which is why we're using this red channel. Okay, so we just need to multiply the two of these together. I'm going to hold down the M key for multiply. Let's select our little node here, and I'm going to hold down control to drag it up a little bit. We're going to plug the red channel of our texture sample into input A. We'll plug the RGB output of our specular color parameter into input B. We'll take the result and plug that into specular. So now you see just a little bit of red influence there. And we can change the specular color however we want to. If we make it dark, so pull it maybe way down here. You see we have almost no specularity. It's there, it's just very, very subtle. And if you're doing something like brick, and you don't want the brick to look particularly shiny, that may be the way to go. But we're going to bring it up just for the sake of example. So there we go. We have a controllable specularity. Now that's not all. Uh, controlling the specular color is one thing, but I would also like to be able to control how glossy the bricks look. To do that, we're going to plug another parameter into specular power. However, specular power is not going to be looking for a vector information. So vector is going to give R, G, and B information. We don't need that. We only need one number. So I'm going to create a new parameter of type scalar. And a scalar is just one number. It's not three like we have here with R, G, and B. So let me select our parameter. And of course, we need to name it. And we'll call this specular power. I'm going to give it a default value of three. And we'll plug this into specular power here on the material. So now that's spread out our specular highlight. And you can use this to adjust the glossiness. So if we increase this, say, to 20, we now have a really tight specular highlight. And now our bricks look really glossy, like they're wet or they've got a sheen of uh, some sort of wax or coating on them. Now, we've got our specularity all taken care of. I'm going to pull my default value back down. Let's say, let's say something like 5 for now. And we need to put a comment box around our specular network. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt and drag a box around all three of these nodes. Right click out here in empty space and choose new comment. And we'll type in specular. Click OK. I'm going to hold down Control and drag our little black triangle so that it includes all of our nodes. And now we can move this around as well. And the next part of our material is done. Let's go ahead and apply our changes. Let's close out of the material editor. Let's save our package. 
and then take a look at what we've got so far. So you can see the bricks are shiny. They've still got a little bit of bump to them. Looking pretty good. So at this point, let's go ahead and call the video, and we will continue in the next video. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.